Okay, so another complex trigonometric equation uh, ca exists when we actually have something like this. And it, it initially, it doesn't look very difficult. If I have something like sine of 3x equal to cos of x, okay, that actually looks very, very simple. And it is actually one of the more complicated ones uh, because it's it's not possible to change this sign and cos into two things that can be added together so for example I can't change cos into the square root of 1 minus sine squared x and then think I'm going to solve it from there by adding them together because the problem is our interior angles are different Okay, there's no way in which you can change this cos so that the two of them can be added. Okay, and even if this was sine of 2x, and I change it into sine 2x cos 2x, then maybe. Okay, actually, that's not a bad idea. Okay, if I, let's look at this. This one could change into 2 sine x cos x um, minus cos x and then we can take out cos x is a common factor cos x is a common factor and I'm left with 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0 so then I have cos x is equal to 0 or 2 sine x minus 1 is equal to 0 and this gives me sine x equal to a half or cos x equal to zero and this is two trig ratios equal to a constant I've definitely gotten to that point okay and hopefully you follow this is actually a good example of another more complex uh, trig equation but if it if it wasn't sine 2x if it was something like um, sine 3x that I looked at in the beginning equal to cos um, cos x then it might not be so simple and there's another approach to this okay that approach is to change cos into sine by using the co-ratios okay now from co-ratios we know that cos of x is what I get when I take sine of 90 degrees plus x or sine to your sine of 90 degrees minus x I'm, I just prefer using this statement in other words to change a cos into a sine I must add 90 degrees to the interior angle that's how I how I see it to go from a cos to a sine okay add 90 degrees to the angle Okay, and that's from co-ratios, and the reason why this is true is because 90 plus is an angle made with the positive y-axis in the second quadrant, okay, and in that means that that's where sine is positive, but to change the 90 plus into, um, or because it's an angle made with the y-axis, I must use co-ratios to change it to an angle with the x-axis, okay, that's where this reasoning comes from, and in in order to do that I then have this I now have my equation changes to something like this sine of 3x is equal to cos of x sorry not cos of x sine of x sine of x plus 90 degrees so it's actually very easy just if I have a sine equal to a cos just change the cos into sine by adding 90 degrees inside that's how easy it is okay but now you are tempted to say but 3x is equal to x plus 90 okay because I mean if sine of something is equal to sine of something else then it must be true that this something is equal to that something okay I mean the, the two sides are equal the two the, the two functions are equal doesn't it mean that the interiors are equal and that unfortunately is not true it's not far from the truth but it's not exactly true let me show you why if I have that sine of a hundred and or let's start easy sine of 30 degrees is a half but I also get that sine of 180 minus 30 degrees is also equal to a half. 
Okay, in other words, sine of 150. In other words, sine of 30 degrees is equal to sine of 150 degrees. But it's not true that 30 degrees is equal to 150 degrees. Those aren't the same um, size angle. So this is not true. Okay, so the only thing that I know is if, if I were to tell you that I have that sine of x is the same as sine of 30 degrees. We can't assume that x is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, but sine of 30 degrees is just equal to a half. And the reference angle of a half for sine would be 30 degrees. In other words, though this is not the solution, it is the reference angle. So if I go back to what I had before, if I have two functions that ha are the same function, okay, however the interiors are different, then I can choose any one of the two. It doesn't matter which one I choose. Any one of the two can just be my reference angle. So let me do that from here. So if I have sine of 3x is equal to cos of x. Then we said we're going to change this cos into a sine and we do that by just adding 90 degrees in inside. So this is equal to sine of x plus 90 degrees. Okay? And now I can choose any one of the two as my reference angle. So I'm just going to choose uh, this side. It really doesn't matter which side you choose. My reference angle is going to be x plus 90 degrees. So this is the first time where our reference angle is not a value but instead an expression. But that's okay. For sine we then always have that um, my solution therefore is, in other words, this side 3x is equal to x plus 90 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. In other words, I just took my reference angle or 3x is equal to, and now I take my uh, 180 degrees minus, because I'm working with sine, this is the other one, minus my reference angle, which is minus x plus 90 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. Those are my two solutions. Okay, so uh, my next step would be, to just solve for x, but this time I see there's an x on both sides, so I must subtract an x on this side, subtract an x on that side, to get that 2x is equal to 90 degrees plus 360 degrees times k, which means x is equal to, divide both sides with 2, to get 45 degrees plus 180 degrees times k. Okay. This one, same thing. I see there's an x on both sides. This side I have a negative x, so I must add an x on the right, left hand side, right hand side, and left hand side. So I get that 4x is equal to 180 minus 90 gives me 90 degrees plus 360 times k. This time dividing both sides with a 4, I get that x is equal to 90 divided by 4 is 22.5 degrees plus that is 90 degrees times k and there are my two solutions okay or my two general solutions at least where k is an element of integers so let's just summarize that okay this this i can do if i have a sign of something equal to a cosine of something else okay so this is something and this is something else I don't know what that is okay then my first step would be change cos to sine by plus 90 to its angle to its angle Okay, make sense? Yes. Okay, secondly, we choose one angle as the reference angle. Okay, and thirdly, we solve by using sines g 
general solution with the reference angle in two. Okay, in other words, the reference angle that we got there. And then fourthly, we, s we solve. We solve the unknown. Okay. And fifth, if we had to find the specific solutions, okay, we would do that as we've always done. Just change K with the 0, 1, 2, etc until we are satisfied that all of our solutions fall inside our interval. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this at that and then in the next quite a few videos we are going to just do loads of examples of these. I'll see you there.